Good evening. I had to think for just a minute if it was morning or evening, but it's evening. And um, we continue on with our services here at Balfour, and I appreciate all of your faithfulness to tune in with us. And uh, it is an honor for me to be able to share with you tonight the Word of God. Uh, before we get started, we're certainly going to spend time praying, and um, I'm going to have Brother Mark be up in just a moment to be able to share with us in prayer. And many of you expressed how much you appreciate what he has been doing for us on that. And so we need to take advantage of it while I got him, because one of these days, Lord willing, we're going to have other things going on in the campus, so uh, uh, he'll, he'll be stretched other places. So we're blessed to have him to be able to pray with us today. Uh, again, we want to welcome you to our services, and um, as all of you know, and you've probably heard rumors now, that uh, we're making plans to try to come back, and um, I'll be uh, communicating with all of you when that time will come, and we're working very closely. Obviously, uh, I spend more time with Mark, and this is a bad thing to have to say, but I spend more time with Mark than I do my own wife, I believe, And uh, but we were talking about that the other day. We we work every day here at the office, and we spend most of the day in, uh, in talking. And so uh, uh, we'll certainly be looking at that and some other leadership we're, we're dealing with, and um, we'll be getting that timeline down to when we're doing that. It's just not as simple as just start back tomorrow and get going. you got to have a lot of uh, uh, I's dotted and T's crossed before we get going, and we're working on that as we speak. We've got a lot going on, and so we're excited about the thought uh, of being back in the house of the Lord but until that time comes we'll continue and just want you to know that we'll start back fairly slowly um, we will probably start back on a Sunday morning and uh, at one time that was not the the intent we were going to start back on a Wednesday and just kind of seeing how things went but we decided our people need to be back in church so we're going to start back on Sunday and we'll start off and just go for a few weeks make sure that everything's running well and, uh, and all that is provided that we don't have some major outbreak or something like that. And certainly we still have uh, the ability to pull back if we had to. But it will be my intention to move forward. I believe that the Lord has impressed upon my heart that we need to go forward. And so we're excited about what uh, God's going to do here. I made a statement to Brother Mark this morning. I believe that once uh, we get back into the house of God and we get back in the sanctuary, I see God just causing this church to really grow and uh, and so that's what my prayer is I pray that as long as we preach the truth and preach the word uh, I think God will bless it and use it and I think you'll see Balfour continue to grow and and we'll pick back in there but it, it's going to take us just a little while to get everybody used to coming back and so uh, we'll get there and um, for those that are not comfortable about coming back when that time comes I understand and I pray that the Lord would give you the courage uh, and uh, the wisdom to know what is right for your family and your situation. But we will be making a move back into the house of the Lord. And uh, so I look forward to that very much. Tonight it's good to have you all here tonight as we come before the throne of grace and mercy. As we call upon him. And so uh, I certainly want you to remember tonight as we pray. I want you to, uh, sometimes uh, lately we've had so much going on and I want to try to get these messages in, and, and this message tonight is pretty uh, involved with Scripture, and um, I think you're going to find out that you enjoy it tonight. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed going back over. I've did this before because I, I wrote this out uh, from you know studying a book several years ago, but it's been refreshing to me to go back and talk about heaven. Tonight we're going to be talking about heaven's award banquet. And, uh, of course, all of us know that that's the judgment seat of Christ. And so we're going to be looking at that in just a moment. And hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Uh, I know that last week we did uh, Paradise Heaven. And um, I've received several comments. Uh, I don't have, for those of you that, that try to communicate with me, uh, usually when you communicate, that man right there is the one that's telling me about it because I do not have Facebook. I just felt like for me, it would be better not to be on there. Sometimes I kind of wished in a way I was, but in another way, I don't need to be involved with all that and see it. And so I've got uh, my wife and other people, uh, Patricia down there, and then certainly Mark, and Mark lets me know if uh, someone has made a comment. So if I just don't respond back to you, that's, uh, that's the reason why. I don't have uh, the ability to do Facebook. And, uh, and if you do get a response back from me, Mark's responding for me. So... Uh, 
And a lot of times I've told him, if he would, to send somebody something to let them know. So uh, just keep that in mind. But I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. We'll get back on this Sunday night. We'll be back on uh, spiritual warfare. We'll be dealing with uh, the three levels of, of darkness that we fight, the realms of battlefield that we have spiritually. And so we'll be back on that uh, this coming Sunday evening. And uh, I have a message that uh, the Lord gave me this past Sunday. I already had another message that, uh, again, that I was uh, uh, could easily preach. But uh, the Lord has kind of impressed upon me uh, to give a message. And I uh, was just telling uh, Patricia a while ago, the title of it is, You Better Get Out While You Still Can. And uh, that's what we'll be preaching out. Uh, this Sunday, so I, I hope it'll be powerful. I hope, you know, the thing about it is, when whenever we make the mention that a powerful sermon, folks, the only thing powerful about it is the power of God, and uh, and so that's what the prayer is. It's not because it's from me. So I am praying that God will send us a powerful message from on high because I need it as much as any of you do. So uh, anyway, just a little food for thought as we get ready. So if you would bow with me tonight as we go before the presence of Holy God. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege to be in the house of the Lord. I thank you for this beautiful church and for these wonderful people that, Lord, are here. God, I thank you for the work that you've laid before us. And, Lord, as we ponder about, Lord, coming back together, I pray that, God, your hand would be upon us. Lord, I, I pray to the same God that was able to give the children of Israel shoes that never wore out. I pray to the same God that is able to provide food in the midst of a desert. I pray to the same God that's able to bring water forth and to water his people. Lord, I pray to the same God that can touch a man that's blind and heal him. To the same God that can speak to demons and run them out of someone. To the same one that can stand and say, peace be still to the storm. God, you're almighty God. And Lord, you deserve our praise and our prayers today. And God, we honor you this morning. And we lift you up and we praise you. And we thank you. And Lord, I ask you, Father, to be with all of us today. Lord, I pray that you'd bless Balfour Baptist Church. Lord, I pray that you'd bless everyone that's listening today. And, and those that are here in the sanctuary, that God, you would open our hearts and our minds as we talk about heaven in a few minutes. And Lord, that you'd speak to us in a mighty way. Father, we ask and pray today, God, that if there be anything in our lives, Lord, I pray in my life especially as I break the word of God this morning, Lord, I pray that, God, you would cleanse me and wash me. Lord, I pray corporately today as a church that, God, if there's sin in our life, that, God, you'd remove it and cover it by the power of the blood. God, I'm so grateful today, Lord, that your mercy endures forever. And, God, I thank you today, Lord, for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, we praise you and we honor you for being a great and mighty God. The great I am is my heavenly Father. And Lord, I thank you for that. For each one tonight that knows him by name, and Lord, that for each one that you know by name, that's probably more important. God, I honor you today, and I thank you. And God, I pray that, God, you would speak life into each one of us. Lord, we can't make it without you. And so, God, we cry out to you today and ask you, God, to be with us. Lord, I pray that you would bless in this time that we have. And Lord, I pray that you would speak through your word in just a few minutes. God, I pray that you'd give us encouragement and that, Lord, you'd make a way for us as we move forward. God, I ask this in Jesus' name, that, God, your name would be honored and magnified. And, Lord, I pray that the house of God here at Balfour would be back open, Lord, live and still online. Lord, that your message and your word might go forth. So, Lord, be glorified, be honored. Lord, remove every obstacle before us. And God, help us, oh God, to be strong in the Lord. And I ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Tonight as we come together, I want us to take just a few moments um, to go over a list and, uh, and something for you just to really focus on. Obviously, all of you get a prayer list that we have sent out, and, and all those names on there are extremely important, very important, and a lot of people are struggling. I certainly encourage you to pray for them. I think about how many times I have people ask me to, to lift them up in prayer and to pray for them or to pray for a husband or a wife or a child. And certainly I thank God today that he knows those names. But tonight I want us to remember 
uh, our own Brenda Ayers and pray God. She just testified just a few minutes ago about God's uh, amazing touch on her life and that the pain has been taken away from her knee. And uh, we want to continue to pray that God would just continue to bring healing and good report there. We pray for Faye already today that God would continue to encourage her and work in her life, help her to deal with the pain, and uh, as she moves forward that she'll keep her eyes upon the Lord. We want to lift up Sabra Bean today. We want to pray for Bobby Brown. Bobby is going in for some tests, and I'll just leave it at that today, and we certainly want to lift up Bobby. And, um, and I just uh, thank the Lord today for Bobby's daughter who has had a recent vision and shared that with me and had that uh, related to me, and, uh, and I appreciate it so much. I want to remember Lynn Buckner today. Uh, Lynn lost her mother this past weekend and, or or b before the weekend, and um, we really didn't know a whole lot about that, but uh, I know that Lynn's lost a mama, and uh, so we certainly want to lift up that, that family and just pray that God would minister as only he can and, and just thank God for his goodness. I want to continue to pray for David Cannon. David seems to be doing well, and uh, just ask that God would continue to bring healing there. Think about Joe and Cat Church. Uh, in, in their advanced age and the issues that they're dealing with and pray that God would continue to bless them. I want to lift up Bobby Crisco this past Saturday. Brother Mark and I, uh, we went over on visitation over to his house and uh, Bobby's not got a good report on his cancer. Uh, he's being strong and battling it, but he's very weak. And uh, so I just want to encourage you to pray for Bobby as he goes through this valley. And uh, we had a wonderful time, was able to hug and and I know I ain't supposed to tell you all this stuff, but uh, we were able to hug and love on him uh, because uh, we do love him and we do thank God for what God's doing in his life. Uh, he is founded on the rock of Christ and uh, he's praising the Lord even in the midst of the storm. And so remember him. I want to continue to lift up Tom and Bobby Frazier and their families and the situations that they deal with from day to day, both health wise and also. Uh, personal uh, uh, nature and certainly ask you to remember my family uh, uh, as we deal with uh, situations and circumstances that are going on there that are pretty hard. Certainly want to ask you to remember my mother as she continues to deal with uh, the memory loss and, uh, and just getting older. We were able to celebrate her 85th birthday this past Sunday. And so uh, it was a wonderful time, and yet by the time we got home, she had no memory of it. And so that's kind of what we're dealing with, and that's what we have. But if we still got our mama, and that's the main thing. I want to remember Nicole Hedgepath today. Nicole is still in the hospital. Uh, Brian was headed up today. They're going to remove a chest tube, I believe, today. And so she is showing improvement, and just pray that God would just work and, and touch her. She's been a very sick young lady and uh, want to just pray for Brian and, and be with Brother Steve as he tries to encourage his son today and uh, that God would take care of them. want to lift up Mary Hobson before you and just ask you to bless her and ask the Lord to bless uh, Becky Howard today and keep his hand on her life. Pray for Pauline Houdon. Pauline is, is tough and getting better and better, and so we pray for her. Think about Leonard Ingo. I haven't got to see Leonard lately, but uh, we want to certainly remember Leonard and Lunette Ingo. We want to remember Harry and Judy Castle and pray that God's hand would be upon them. Uh, we want to pray for the, the Pendry family and especially Kim. And uh, certainly remember the Ridge family as uh, Shirley's working through uh, the loss of her husband. And, um, and God is bringing healing to that heart. Just pray for her and, and pray for Sissy, the daughter. And just pray that God, uh, she was a daddy's girl and it's been hard for her to let go of her daddy. So just pray that God would heal that hurt. I want to lift up Rosalind Shine to you and ask uh, as she, she wrestled with physical uh, limitations and things that are going on in her life that God would be with her and help her during this time. I want to continue to pray for Sister Pam who's here today and honored to have her and Doug with us and pray for Pam that God would continue to watch over her and bless her and strengthen her and strengthen Doug. Uh, I want to pray for Ed and Francis Spivey. And, um, you know, as, as all of you know, Francis is coming up on... 50 years here at the church of playing the organ, so uh, she's been faithful, and so we certainly want to remember both the Spiveys and pray that God would be with them during this time. want to lift up Mark Strider to you, and uh, as most of you know, Mark has a, a brain tumor, and um, he's been through it, and 
we're just praying that God will continue to work and show even when everybody kind of throws up their hand and say, well, there's nothing else can be done. God, you've always got something that can be done because God's still there and God can do anything. And I certainly want to lift up Billy and Carolyn as uh, their hearts have been ripped out of their chest over this and uh, they, they're, they're pretty strong people, but it's their, they're young and, and so pray for them. I want to continue to pray for Patricia Underwood as Patricia is convalescing well, I believe it is, from her knee. And uh, we have a staff meeting that's coming up next week, and I think she's going to be able to try to be there. So I'm excited about that. And then I think about all those unspoken folks today that really don't want their name mentioned, but God knows where you're at, knows what you're dealing with. Um, we certainly want to remember those. And uh, um, I was just um, sharing with one of our ladies here just a few minutes ago that she feels really burdened about this. Uh, it's called like a National Day of Prayer. Uh, I think Franklin Graham is going to be heading it up. It's on September the 26th. And I'd encourage all of you to be praying about that time, but he's going to lead an effort to be able to pray for our president and the leadership up there that God, that God is the only hope that any of us have in this nation. And uh, I think about a, a lady that called and spoke with Brother Mark today, and about all that I can tell you is that she just told Mark that she needs a miracle in her life. And God knows what that is, and so we bring that. And, so, uh, and then also Jim Wright, as Jim is... Uh, cancer has returned and he's having to undergo treatments again and so we certainly want to lift him up so the list goes on and on and on there's so many people so many needs and we don't even scratch the surface to what's out there and no doubt uh, all of us probably have issues and needs in our own families or people that we know but uh, those are the ones that we have uh, given to us today and so uh, with that in mind I'm going to ask brother Mark if he would come forward and if he would lead us in a time of prayers, we seek the Lord's face on their behalf. We also need to remember Barry Bunting, who uh, came home from the hospital Monday from surgery. He's doing well from there, and uh, they got the infection out and all that kind of stuff also as he's at home uh, recuperating. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, we just uh, stand amazed at who you are. And Lord, to think about all the things that you've done for us. Father, how your hand's been upon us, around us. How you carried us through these storms. And yet, Father, when we fail you, you still love us. So God, tonight I pray before your throne. That God, that we, your people, would be a people who would draw closer to you. Who would rely upon the moving of your Holy Spirit in our lives. That, Father, that all these prayer requests and these mentioned ones and the unmentioned, Father, you know what they are. And so, God, we just pray tonight that, Lord, that your will be done. That God, if it's healing that takes place, then we'll give you the glory for it. If situations are met, then God will praise you for it. If storms are subsided, then God will shout on high to you for doing that. And God, tonight I ask that as people are tuning in and those who are here today, that Father, that you would continue to be a bright shining light in their life and in the lives of their family God with us being out of church since March 15th a lot of people has become disembobulated in what's happening in life so God we pray right now by the power of your Holy Spirit God that you would speak to hearts and minds that those who are struggling with things of the mind, those things of thoughts of suicide or whatever it may be, that God, that by the power of the living God, that Lord, that you would reach down from heaven and Lord, that you would help them in this hour of need. Lord, there are so many people who take their own life daily here in this country and around our world. And so God, we ask a special protection over those tonight. And Lord, we pray for those who 
are struggling with memory and memory loss and things that have uh, that are going on within their body that God that you would help heal them and Lord those with the dreaded disease cancer God that you would just touch and bring healing but most of all Father we pray that they know you as Lord and Savior so that they've confessed with the mouth and received in the heart that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior so God would you do that for us tonight Lord, I pray for our students and the teachers and heard on the news this week how the COVID has ramped up in our colleges and universities. And so, God, even in our local schools, we need a touch, Father. We need this COVID wiped away. So, God, we're thinking and planning on by the, your word to be opened back up as a church in person. God, we need protection over this house of God. Yes. We need protection over yes. our people. God, we pray that you would hold all this stuff at bay so we can come into the house, that we can bring glory and honor to your name here at Balfour Baptist Church. And God, who those who can't come or may be gripped with the fear to come, God, may you touch them. May they continue to watch through this social media. And Lord, that you would continue to send your word out into homes through this social media or by the radio, Lord, so lives can be changed for eternity. Again, Lord, I think about our kids and our students. Lord, it's going to be wonderful to know that we'll hear those feet running through the halls of Balfour Baptist Church once again. The God that these children who love to come to church will be able to look to their grandma and grandpa and say, Church? And they can come that day to church. God, it's been amazing how we take so much for granted. God, may we never be short-sighted in what you do for us and how you've blessed us. So God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray on this message tonight, this teaching. That our shepherd, Gary Mason, would be touched from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord as he brings forth your word. So God grant it in your name. Not that Gary's anything special. He's just your servant, a willing vessel to be filled by the power of your Holy Ghost and to be used by you, Lord. And we're grateful for that. And Lord, for each and every person who is watching this, God, may you bless their homes. May whatever it is that binds people up tonight, Lord, may it be lifted. May they cry out to Holy God to relieve them of whatever it is. And God, you'll do that. And God, for the lady today that called, for the miracle she needs, Lord, grant it. She's in a tough situation, so God, would you help her? May she be able to give glory and testimony to God how you've touched and helped. And so God, you know what all the unspoken needs are. And Lord, there are many that come across my desk and through the phone and even out in public, as Pastor Gary had mentioned. God, we all need your grace and mercy today. We need the power of your Holy Spirit in us. And so, God, tonight we thank you once again to be able to gather into your house, to have this time together to pray, to have fellowship, but most of all to be enriched by the Word of God. So, God, we love you. We thank you. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Remember, folks, Jesus loves you. He really does. Thank you, Brother Mark. And um, tonight, uh, as we prepare to go to the Word of God, we'll be looking. And I tell you what, if you want to, you can go to Revelation chapter 20. And uh, that will probably be the first place uh, that will eventually go. Um, tonight's message is entitled Heaven's Award Banquet. And I remember one time, uh, it's been a few years now, when my son was playing ball at Asheboro High School, I went to an awards banquet. And I know Mark played at Asheboro. But many of you will know exactly what I'm talking about in your life and what you've been involved with. But he went to an awards banquet at Asheboro High School for fall sports teams. 
And what I noticed was this. I noticed that all the athletes fit into one of three categories and receive three types of rewards based on their category. First, we have those who made the team. and They received a, a paper certificate of being uh, on the team. No negative comments. Everything shared that night was positive observation of the person's performance and effort. Secondly, there was those that uh, were honored as players that played on the varsity teams. These individuals received a big, white, fluffy A that went on their jacket, I guess it would be. I don't know if they wear jackets anymore, but it got a big A that would have been on there. And it was trimmed in blue, and they were what they called the letterman. So they received accolades for, for being there. And then the, the third level was the most select group were given trophies and plaques for being all county, for being all conference, for being all state, or most valuable player on offense, most valuable player on defense, most dedicated, and sportsmanship. So all those awards were given out. So when you consider the heavenly banquet, banquet, uh, bank, banquet that we're all going to be at, uh, it's very similar to an awards banquet that we have here on earth. The judgment seat of Christ will be attended by everyone who goes to heaven. All right, that's for every born-again believer. Those that by faith have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will be invited. Now, we've been talking about this a lot lately, especially me and Mark, about if the rapture of the church took place today, how many from Balfour would go? And I don't know. I don't have that ability to look into people's hearts, but according to all those that have come long before me, then it may shock some of us. So the thing that I want us to understand today is you can't be sitting there on your laurels, resting on your laurels, so to speak, thinking everything's all right. You must know that you know that you've been saved. You must know Christ in a real way. I heard a man say this morning at breakfast, he said, there has to be a change. So in your life, one of the things that you have to be able to notice is something must change in your life. All things are put to death. All things are, are, are thrown away or cast in the back. Doesn't mean that we don't mess up sometimes. We all mess up. But there has to be a change. So tonight I want to challenge you today that this banquet that we're talking about is for those who know him. Those who have been born again. And you want to know what the reality of it? Billy Graham once said that there may be four people sitting on a pew. One would be taken, the other three left behind. And man, that's scary. And I don't know that that's how it would be here. But folks, I don't think it's very far off. The Word of God tells us that narrow is the way. And few there be that find it. So the main thing tonight is you've got to know that you know that you're ready to go home. You've got to know that if death were to come this day, I don't have a plan on dying. I don't have a plan on having a car wreck or a heart attack or, or being hit in the head with a meteor or whatever it could be. But if it came, then my whole premise of my life is I must know that I've been born again, that my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that's what I want you to know. Start with tonight, you must be born again. You must be saved. So everyone at this uh, this place that we'll be joining at the judgment seat there in heaven, everyone will be recognized and there will be no negative words spoken. Now I want you to think about this. Your sins have been atoned for. Your sins have been washed away. But we will give an account for what we have done for Christ. We will give an account for how we've did Bible studies or prayed or how we've loved on other people or the amount of love that's in our heart, the ministry that we've done, the things behind the scene that nobody else sees. 
from the times that people I think about uh, sometimes on Wednesday and Sunday I think about those who while we have people in here they will disinfect this place and nobody sees it but only a handful of people but God sees it and God will be looking to reward even those people those who scrub out a toilet that's not very pleasant but they do it as unto the Lord God will reward those people as much as he will a preacher that's preaching the word up here so everything shared will be positive observation of a person's performance and their effort of serving Christ. So where does that find you right now? Where does that find you tonight, those of you that are listening to me? Are you loving God and honoring Him with your life? Are you serving Him with the abilities that God has given to you? Or are you falling short in those areas? Now we think about Judgment Day. Hebrews 9.27 says... It is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. We know that there's coming a time that we shall stand before God to give an account for our lives. I told some of you earlier about this dumb phone that I got. Sure enough, it's about to rattle off up here, but I've got, I've got the sound down. And somebody want to talk to the preacher. But after death, the Bible says we will face judgment. And folks, you got to, that's why I'm saying you got to know that you're ready to step through eternity with the blood of Christ applied to your life. You might ask, well, what, what if somebody dies and they're not sure or they, they, they're lost? They, they've never accepted Christ. Folks, it is not good. And there's another judgment that we'll look at in just a moment. Those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be ushered immediately into paradise after death. If one of you were to die today, I'd be able to stand up here. My heart would be broken for you as I had to do a funeral message. But I'd be encouraged knowing that as soon as that person stepped out of this life, they were ushered into the presence of God into paradise. And so that's what we hang our hats on today. Those who have chosen not to accept Christ as their Savior We'll spend an eternity separated from God in a place that we don't want to go. Upon salvation, that is asking Christ to come into your life, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We've studied about that in Revelation. We've studied about it prior to that. And uh, many messages that we've shared about you must have your name written in the book of life. And so we know that all Christians will stand before a judgment seat of Christ. This judgment is focused on how we have lived or are living and how we have done ministry for Him. It may be a deal like when I stand before Him. Any time that I've stood behind this sacred pulpit or this sacred desk as they call it, if I have tried to preach in the flesh, if I have tried to preach what I think is best, if I've tried to be judgmental from up here, then God will judge that. But if I've got up here and I've trusted God to give me the words that I need, to give me the message that comes from His Word, if I've been faithful to preach what He's laid on my heart, God will bless me and reward me for that. But what about those who have rejected Christ? They will face the terrifying great white throne judgment. It's found in Revelation chapter 20. If you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation 20. And uh, I think I told all of you to do that. I'm still adjusting to my glasses up here. And I have to move my head around a little bit to, to get them. But, uh, but uh, they seem to be working pretty good. In verse 11 it says, And then I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. Now this is Almighty God. Now you think about the power of God and the look that must come through those eyes, and they wanted to flee away. And it says, I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And all books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up its dead who were in it. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, those who had died long before. 
and they that were judged, each one according to his works. So there is a degree of, of judgment that will flow against those that are lost. Those who have done great destruction to mankind that have spread the lies of Satan will obviously be judged more than someone who just never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then in verse 15 it says, Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So again, we're reminded that you must be born again and your name must be in the book. Now, just as a review for you, all right, if you would with me, go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we want to look at verse 10. And this should be a verse that, that many of you remember. Hopefully some of you will have this memorized. In verse 10 of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in his body according to that which he has done, whether good or bad. Now again, this is for believers. The great white throne is for those who, I don't want your Jesus. I don't want to be saved. I want to live my own life. And they reject him. And they leave this world not being born again. Now think about the judgment seat of Christ. It is for believers only. The great white throne is non-Christians. Those who have rejected God's holy son. The judgment seat of Christ will be an awards banquet. Where God will be looking to reward us for what we have done and accomplished for the kingdom. The great white throne will be more of a courtroom setting. Where facts will be brought out about a person's life. At the judgment seat of Christ there will be rewards given. But at the great white throne judgment, punishment will be doled out. The judgment seat of Christ will be very positive. And folks, I'm telling you today that if you're a believer today, that it's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be scared of. You ought to look forward to that day when you stand before the Lord and give an account for your life. Because your sins have been atoned for. And yet I'm reminded that the great white throne judgment will be very negative. And it's a situation where you don't want to be there. The judgment seat of Christ is an awards banquet. It is a positive event that we should be preparing for. And I want you all to know today that everything that you do for the kingdom's sake. I don't care if it's sweeping a floor, cooking a meal, spraying disinfectant singing in the choir, playing the piano or the organ, ushering, being a deacon, being a Sunday school teacher, being a church member who loves other people and is given the gift of encouragement and mercy. Whatever God has you and where he's placed you, God will be looking to reward you. While the great white throne judgment must be avoided. Now, for all of us, we need to be doing all we can for the kingdom. It's about the kingdom work. It's about leading others to Jesus. And whatever God's equipped you to do, be humble and be willing to do what God has done for you. I realize there's people even in this building right now and, and those that are listening today that have been in great abilities and skills, can do multiple things. I know for a fact that Mark Wilburn can come up here and preach. I know that he can teach a Sunday school lesson. I know that he can lead a discipleship group. I know that he can head up a youth program or a WANAS. He's got those abilities and skills that God has equipped him with, and yet he has sent him here to work under this pastor for the kingdom of God. Someday God will probably elevate him once again to a pastoral position. He's already in a pastoral position, but I'm talking about senior pastor. So God will be looking to honor Mark, and I'm using him as an example right now, honor Mark for his willingness to humble himself and to serve the Lord, giving back unto God what God has blessed him with. 
And I thank God that God has sent him here. What a blessing he's been. What a blessing he's been to me today for all of you that are here. And for the many that are listening today, God has blessed Balfour Baptist Church, but he's blessed my life today because of you. And folks, it's about all of us in doing our best to see that, that um, we grow the kingdom of God. I tell you one thing that Mark has brought in my life, and I will share this, is that Mark has helped me to understand probably greater than any time before, this is not about a Baptist church. And it's not about a denomination. It's about the kingdom of God. And it's about building the kingdom by leading others to him. And I think I received that from him. I am fully Baptist. I am proud to be Southern Baptist. But folks, I'm proud to be a child of the living God. And I'm proud to have a place that is reserved for me in heaven. Now I find nothing in the Bible that tells me that as some of you have heard that uh, St. Peter stands at the gate of heaven checking off those who get in and who don't. We hear jokes all the time that's about that. But the Word of God tells us you must be born again. Your name must be in the book of life. Everyone at the judgment seat of Christ will be a believer. Now the judgment seat of Christ will not be a place of punishment. Punishing people for poor performance. No punishment will be given out, only rewards. And if you're a Christian, the Bible states in Romans 8 1, it states this, it's very encouraging. You know, I might could say, Doug, have you lived a perfect life? And Doug would look at me and probably drop his head and he said, No, I have not. I've failed the Lord many times in my personal life. And yet, I'm reminded that in Romans 8, 1, Doug and Gary, and for everybody else that's here, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So there's no condemnation there. Our sins have been forgiven. The only catch of it is, you've got to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. And we, have to, and we have to strive to do that daily. Now, Jesus took all of our sins and the punishment required for them, he took them on himself when he went to the cross. So I want you to understand today, I don't care where you've been, and I don't care what you've done, that Jesus' blood was sufficient to cover a multitude of sin in your life. And that because of him, you have a blessed hope today. Now Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient to cover a full debt of all of our sins. It's paid in full. He don't have to go back to the cross. He don't have to go back and die again. His sufficiency was in that he died and gave himself one time. The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit. Hebrews 8, 12 is a powerful verse of Scripture. You're talking about powerful. This is powerful. It's one that we all should know, and I'm reminded today that I need to know this one in my heart. It says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Thank God for that. And their sins and their iniquities I remember no more. Folks, it is a no-brainer today. Why would anybody choose to reject Jesus? Why would anybody say no when you're given the ability to bring all your trash and problems before the Lord and say, God, I am unworthy, but Lord, I bring it to you, and I ask you to forgive me. My Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And will be at this uh, judgment seat of Christ. There will be no punishment for sins handed out at the judgment seat of Christ. For it is a heavenly awards banquet for believers that are born again. Now when you think about the heavenly awards stand. We remember 2 Corinthians 5.10 where it says. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he hath done, whether it's good or bad. So we know uh, uh, 
we see this judgment seat, and it's often referred to as the Bema seat. And if you can think about it, it's about where a judge in Greek times would sit on a Bema seat. It was high above the crowd, and they would look down and make the judgment who won the race and, and, uh, and about who won this event or whatever. It is not a courtroom, but a judgment seat. And um, most of us have a negative view of being judged. And that's because of the world that we live in, and people are so quick to judge one another. Folks, a Christian house of God, we tear one another up with judgment. You know what? I, I, I'm working on a message probably for this Sunday. And I'll give you this much of it. I'm going to be talking about Abraham and Lot. And I'm not going to be spending a lot of time on Abraham, but it's going to be more of a focus on Lot because it deals with a lot of our situations today in our world, in our society, in our church, with our people today. And if you look at the story of Lot, it is one of the most saddest stories that you can find in the Bible. It is absolutely watching a man's life come apart. And he loses everything. Because he chose wrongly. And he hitched his wagon to something that was not real. It was a lie of Satan. And so when we think about that, and we think about uh, the Bema seat, you would think automatically as we judge, well, Lot, there ain't no way he could be born again. And yet the Word of God says that God sent his angels to get him out of there. And they got him out of that city before they destroyed it. Now we'll go into this in more detail. So God saved him and spared him. But everything he had, he lost. All of you know he lost his wife. He lost his son-in-laws. It was him and his two daughters is all that got out of Sodom. And I still, as a Christian, would be looking and say, there ain't no way that man could be saved. His life didn't match it up. He's down there with a bunch of people that are, are uh, I guess, LGBTQ. I mean, it was terrible. The men were sodomites. They tried to have sexual intercourse or wanted to have it with angels that were there. And God smited them for it. And so we see the, the scourge of sin, and it would be easy for me to say, and I bet there'd be more, many people here to say, hey, you know what, it could be born again. And yet if you go over to 2 Peter chapter 2, 7 and 8, Peter says he was deemed righteous by God. And God counted it righteous to him that he was saved from Sodom and Gomorrah. And even in uh, Corinthians it talks about, and we'll look at all this, it talks about over in Corinthians that there'll be some that will be saved by fire. That judgment will come and we'll, we will be able to enter into heaven, but we lose everything we have because we were not ready to see the king. We were not ready to go home, but we were born again. And so, folks, we've got to be careful about judging people. So we know awards will be given out. I think about Revelation twenty two twelve. If you have that, turn to it, Revelation twenty two twelve, 12. And Jesus tells us uh, something that we need to know that was expressed through John. It says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according his work shall be, shall be, whatever that shall be. So, folks, I challenge you today. To know that there's still time to be about the king's work. There's still time to, to do what God has called you to do. I, I just want to get personal here today. You think God will not honor Dwight Ayers for all that he has done to see that the word of God goes forth from Balfour Baptist Church? Do you think God will not honor his son that has also given his life and his capabilities to see that the message of the gospel is sent out? Do you think God will not honor some of you that are so full of love that, that you love other people and that you express that love and just want to be around the house of God? Do you think God will not bless you for that? 
You think those that provide food and, and bring little things or send cards or, or, or pick-me-ups? I think about Barry Bunning today, and, and I'm so thankful today to hear that Barry's doing much better. He's been in a horrible place physically, and I thank God that God's bring, bringing relief. But you think God will not honor him? For a life that has been changed and now has a heart for people that there's been at least three or four people that have been brought to this office down here that have been born again and their life changed because his faithfulness to go and see them. That's just one person. And folks, all of you that are here today, the little things that you do, you think God didn't see the other day when Keith helped Mark up there making sure that Jesus is lit up in our window? Our stained glass up there. God's keeping account of all this. And it tells us that the books will be opened. For those of you that have supported me and been here. And it's not about supporting me. But supporting me as your pastor. To pray for me and to lift me up. God hears every one of those prayers. In Job 5.22. John chapter 5 verse 22. It says, For the Father judgeth no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. So you might say, well, who will be our judge? It will be Jesus. That's who will judge us. Acts chapter 10, verse 42. And I'll tell you what, I'm just going to take the time just to go over there and slow down for you a little bit. Acts chapter 10, verse 42. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who is ordained of God to be judge of the living and the dead. So we know that Jesus is there. Look, if you would, at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 8. And I will tell you after this, we'll be going over to Hebrews. So you can find the Hebrews and get ready for that in just a moment. But 2 Timothy verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a, excuse me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not for me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I want, I want y'all, I want every one of you in here today to look at me. Are you, are you looking forward? Brenda, are you looking forward to his appearing? Do you love him today? Do you love the thought of him coming again for you? And folks, those of you that are listening today that that, that are out there on the internet listening to our service and watching our service today, do you love the thought of His appearing? Are you looking forward to going home? Well, that's what that verse of Scripture says, those who love His appearing. This world is full of people right now who don't love that appearing. They don't even want to think about it. They reject it. They scoff at it. They make fun of us. But folks, I don't know about you, but I get my encouragement knowing that, Lord, if anything happens to me today, and you take my breath from me and I go home, that, Lord, home is heaven where you're at. And so that's what we got to hang on today. Now, as the Son of God, He will know everything about us. Now, that's kind of scary, isn't it? He knows everything you think. He knows every conversation that you have. He knows every joke that is told and you laugh at or you say. Thank God that our sins have been atoned for because great is our sins. But he knows our thoughts, our desires. He knows where our love is for him. He knows what we struggle with. He knows what we wrestle with. And I'm reminded that in Hebrews 2, 14 through 8 tells us that he can fully emphasize with everything we have gone through which makes him the perfect judge he lived on this earth for 33 years and the Bible says he was tempted in every way and yet sin not if you would go over to Hebrews chapter 2 and let's look beginning with verse 14 Hebrews chapter 2 
beginning with verse 14. And we'll go through 18. Insomuch then, as the children hath partaken of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. All right, he's defeated the devil for your sakes. Verse 15, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. That means us. Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of of the people for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted and we ought to thank God for that today all of us starting with your preacher today needs the hand of God to be upon our life and to give us the grace that we need to be able to survive some people get unnerved when all of our secrets are exposed but I want you to know today that Jesus knows it all and now is not the time to make unnecessary, uh, well, let me put it this way. Now is the time to make necessary adjustments to your life that you might be ready. I was going to put it in a different way, but now is the time to make those changes that you need to make. The Bible tells us it will be refined as if by fire. Revelation 1.14 refers to Jesus' eyes to be like the flame of fire. Folks, I want you to imagine, if you would, for me, for just a moment, when you stand in His presence, and when you see Him for the first time, and the Bible says that the eyes of Jesus are not weak and anemic, but His eyes are as a flame of fire, cutting through and cutting asunder all the, the things that we throw up to block Him, and that He sees straight into our mind and into our heart. I think about uh, over, if you would, go over to 1 Corinthians. And we're going to look at chapter 3, if you would. You know what fire is used for? You know, I always remember this. Uh, they said that for gold to be perfectly pure, it has to be burnt. It has to be put to the fire. When I say burnt... This has to be heated to burn the dross out of that life. And the fire is used to burn out all the impurities of precious metals. And our lives will need to be purified and refined by those eyes of fire. Paul described the judgment seat of Christ as an examination by fire. Look, if you would, at verse 11 of chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians. It says, for no other foundation can anyone lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will come manifest, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. And if anyone's work which he has built endures he'll receive a reward and if anyone's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire and folks that's where lot came in in my opinion he lost everything and yet was saved because he knew the lord you know, I've got a caption that's wrote by this Bible. I got this Bible in 1987 for a wedding gift from my wife. And I wrote this a long time ago to myself, and it says this. And I had no intentions of reading this, but the Lord, I'll share it with you. It says, my works will be tried by fire. My works must be done in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring honor to the Lord God. And folks, I'm here to tell you today. That your works today must be done under the power and the direction of the Holy Spirit. That we might honor God. As His eyes of fire sees our positives, 
described as gold, silver, and precious stones, they will be refined and made more evident and more beautiful. The negatives in your life, those of you that struggle with fleshly things, those of you that have a mouth that you have trouble controlling, those of you that have tempers that get away from you, some of you that have dispositions that shouldn't be, it says they'll be burned up. And you'll suffer loss because of them. Based on how we have lived and what we did for God down here on this earth, we will receive rewards such as crowns and condemnation or commendations and commissions. Great responsibility will be given to God's people. Now I would, if you would, go over to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And let's think about casting our crowns at His feet. So based on how we lived and what we did for God on this earth, as I just said, we will receive rewards, crowns, commendations, commissions. And let's look at chapter 4, beginning with verse 9 through 11. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, and the twenty-four elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will they exist and were created. Folks, I believe that the crowns that we receive we will cast back at his feet. To give honor to Him is according to what the Scripture says. So, Heaven's Award Banquet. Three tips on how to get there, or, or three tips about it. This is very simple. Number one, to get there, you have to personally ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Folks, if you're listening to me tonight and you don't know if you're ready, you can be. So, first of all, you've got to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You've got to ask Him to come in. Secondly, you need to be fully engaged in service while we still have time. There's still a chance to work, and we have to be fully engaged. That doesn't mean I can just throw up my hands and quit and go home. Now, I may pick sometimes and say, you know, I'll just go to the house. If something didn't go my way or whatever. But folks, we must all be fully engaged for kingdom service to honor His name. And third today, we must start living for eternity and win trophies that we can lay at Jesus' feet. You might say, well, what trophies am I trying? Folks, it's about le leading people to Christ. It's about making an impact for the kingdom. There may be one person out there that God has called you to go to. There may be somebody today that God has put in your life that only you can reach. Not your pastor, not Mark, not the Underwoods, but maybe somebody Doug or Pam can reach. Or Glenda, it may be somebody that you can reach. But every one of us in here are to be doing kingdom work. Now, I want to give you some important things, and we'll be through. We're kind of in the concluding phase of this. And I know it's a lot of scripture, but go to Romans chapter 2, beginning with verse 12. And you might say, well, what's God's criteria for judging people? Well, let's just look at that. Romans 2, 12 through 15. For as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And as many have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things contained in these laws, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. So that's one that you've got to get your arms around a little bit and ponder on that, but you must know Him. You must trust Him. Folks, we stand guilty before God today, and we need the Savior today in our life. Secondly, God's judgment will separate the believer from the non-believer. Let's go to Matthew 13, 30. 
Matthew 13, 30. This is the parable of the mustard seed, or just before it. It says, Let both grow until harvest, and at the time of harvest, Jesus said, I will say unto the reapers, First gather together the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Are you a wheat today? Are you one of his? Or are you a tare? That is to be bound up and to be burnt. And then Revelation chapter 2. Now you all ought to be wearing your pages out now. Chapter 2 verse 12. And this is a message to Perk. Uh, Pergamon, it says, and to the angel of the church at Pergamos write, these things say he who has a sharp two-edged sword. Judgment is coming for those who don't know him. And folks, we must be ready to go home. Now, believers will also participate in God's judgment. Look at verses 26 and 27 of chapter 2. And it says, and he who overcomes... And keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the potter's vessel shall be broken into pieces. And as I also received from my father. So I want you to understand today that we'll be part of what God accomplishes in that time. Now we are reminded again about Revelation 20 for those who reject Christ, they're headed to the great white throne judgment. You might say, well, pastor, what about those people that, that you've done uh, funerals for that weren't ready to go? Someday they'll stand before the great white throne judgment. It's a horrible place. What about those people, pastor, do you know people right now that you like and, and, and that are considered an acquaintance or a friend? Yes. And if death were to come their way, they would be in eventually at the great white throne judgment. So what will happen in God's final judgment? Look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And let's look at verse 27. And it reads, For the Son of Man will come in glory of his Father with his angels, and the, he will reward each according to his works. So folks, are you ready to meet him today? If the trumpet of God should sound, are you ready? Then I think about uh, there's eternal punishment. Look at Matthew 25. Let's go over there. We've not got a whole lot more. Verse 26, Matthew 25. And I hope all of you find this very interesting because you've you got to know this. You've got to be aware of this. And these things will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Well, how in the world, Keith, can you be assured of heaven? Some of you ask that question all the time to yourself. How do I know that I know that I've been saved? The Bible says that the Spirit of the living God dwells inside of you. And that someday when we stand before God, if Peter was to be out there and he'd say, Keith, why should I allow you into my heaven? Keith can look at him and say, because of the righteousness that came through his blood that's covered my soul, I stand today in his image. Covered in the blood of Christ. Covered in His righteousness. That's why a holy God can look at a Keith Underwood. Or a Gary Mason. Or a Joanna Mason. Or a Doug. Or a Mark. Or any of us that are here today. That's why we can do that. What about those who do reject Jesus? Any of you that uh, ever tried to speak with somebody and they rejected Him? Look over at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Let's look beginning with verse 29. 
Luke 11, 29 through 32. And while the crowds were thickly gathered together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, and no sign will be given except in the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, also the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in judgment with all men of this generation and condemn them, for she comes from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. So we see here that we think about those who reject Christ, it is not good. The Ninevites were headed to a devil's hell, but God raised up Jonah even though he didn't want to go. One of the greatest revivals that's ever been was in the land of the Ninevites when they were born again. And you might say, well, what about those with hard hearts? Go over to Romans chapter 11. Maybe once you could say that I used to have a hard heart and not much could get into mine. But let's look at what Romans chapter 11 verses 8 through 10 says. Just as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense to them. And let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow their back or bow their back always. So that basically what that says is that there's people with hardened hearts that God has allowed their heart to be hardened and that there's been scales, spiritual scales over their eyes. And the last point that I want to bring out is we cannot know who will be in God's kingdom. Let's look at Matthew 13. Matthew chapter 13. And let's look at 47 through 49. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Verse 50, and says, and cast them into a furnace of fire. And there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So the hour is coming when the end will be here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, if you remember what we read a while ago, says we need to take heed that judgment is coming. In the book of John, it says the hour is coming when the dead shall hear his voice. There's coming a time when we need to be reminded that we shall not enter into condemnation, as Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And then I think about, uh, we're going to conclude with this. Go over to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I think we need to have this at the forefront of our minds, to always be thinking of what God has prepared for us. Verses 13 through 17. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest they, you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So folks, what a wonderful place to conclude it tonight right there. That rapture could take place today. That rapture could be tonight. Are you ready to go home? Are you ready to meet him? Are you born again? 
Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? You may be there tonight and say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I've, I've failed miserably. I've come up short. So have I. But do you know him? Has the blood been applied to your life? Has your name been written in the book of life? The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says there's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Jesus is the only way. In John 14, 16, it says, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So tonight, here's the deal. If you want to be ready for that awards banquet, if you want to be prepared for that day to enter into the presence of God, you must be born again. You must be saved. And if you haven't been saved, you're not ready. And you're not going to like what you find when you die. So the choice is yours. Will you make the right choice and call on Christ? Believer tonight, Christian, will you make the right decisions and do all you can to build the kingdom of heaven? Folks, my prayer is for all of you to heed this warning tonight for us and to look with anticipation about being in the presence of God. Folks, here's the deal. Doug and Pam, for you to be at the awards banquet, to be at the judgment seat of Christ, means you've been born again and you're in His presence. Think about it. You know, every once in a while, i got to give an evaluation to Mark Wilburn. The Lord has placed me as pastor of the church, and yes, there's people that evaluate me. But I have to evaluate, Mark, have you done your job? Have you followed through with the responsibilities? Patricia, have you done your job as a secretary? Donna, have you done your job as a, as a music director? Have you led the choir? Harold, have you done everything that has been asked of you to do as our media services coordinator? Ladies, have you played the instruments and been faithful to play and be there? Those that would be over the nursery, have you done your job? There's evaluations that have to be done. But the thing about it is, they're all in the kingdom of heaven. They're all born-again people. And the same will be for each one of us. So before I get to preaching again, let's close with a word of prayer tonight. And just make sure that you're ready to go. Father, we thank you for the day, for the blessings of this. Thank you for the power of your word. I thank you, Lord, how it speaks to my heart. And helps me to be ready for that time that's coming soon. So God, encourage my people today. Encourage those people today that are listening, Lord, that need a touch from heaven. And God, help us to be ready for that time. And God, I pray that you'll use your word to encourage us and to help us to keep on keeping on. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.